Hi guys, you asked for a tutorial on using bones. So today, let's take a look at what this tool is, how to use it, and what settings are available. I'll also show you how to prepare a character, and then we'll create this kind of run animation. Ready? Let's go! I already have a prepared character, and I'll be showing everything using a raster example. Let's look at the settings I've used. My canvas size is 1080 by 1920 frames per second, 12. Now let's take a look at the layers. The entire character should be grouped into one folder. Let's expand it. Inside, there's a folder called head full, which consists of face and head. Then there's left hand, which has two arm parts. Important, if you want to make an elbow or knee sharp, you need to split the parts like this. Also, the ends should be rounded so that when rotating shapes, everything looks correct. Next is right hand, also with two parts. The next group is body. It consists of a base and a mask with the top of the shorts. To apply this mask, click the layer preview and choose toggle mask. Let's do the same for the face layer. Then we have the leg groups. A leg consists of an upper part, lower part, and foot. The second leg is built the same way. Now that the character is fully prepared, we can move on to rigging. First, select the character group. Go to Properties. In the Group Layer section, find Effects, Locate and select Bones. Now we need to draw the bone structure. Start with the shorts. I divide the body into two parts. Then move on to the arms. When adding bones, it's important to follow the hierarchy. What connects to what? So, we draw the first arm first. Again, two parts. Before adding the second arm, make sure to first select the spine bone so the arm attaches to it. Next, select the spine again and add the head. Now for the legs. Here, select the bottom bone and then add bones for the first leg and then the second. Great, now we need to connect the bones to our layers so everything works properly. Click the bone, choose Edit Bone Binding, then tap the layer you want. In my case, it's the shorts. Then click Bind to Bone on the same bone. I repeat this process and also connect the body layer. Now repeat this for every bone. Guys, our bones are ready for animation. Let's see what we can do here. First, let's check the controls. You can rotate the shape by clicking and dragging on the side. Also, if you tap the first point, you can move the entire shape. All connected parts will move with it. The second point controls stretching. In the Properties panel, you'll find some settings. A useful one is setting the maximum rotation angle. The full hierarchy is shown here too, though bones are named by default as B and a number. You can rename them if needed, or if you like keeping things organized. You can also tap a point and hide it to avoid selecting it by accident. All right, now let's create a run cycle for this character. The easiest way is to use ready-made reference frames, which you can find by searching the tag run cycle. I picked one of them. In the timeline, stretch the layer to nine frames, but limit playback to eight frames. This is important for creating a proper loop. Now open the keyframe settings. We'll start with tilting the body. 
Let's do it like this for now. Let's also draw a straight line on a new layer to mark where the feet will be. This will represent the ground. By the way, in drawing mode, the bone setup isn't visible and the image resets to the default state. Let's go back to our character. To bring the bones back up, click the figure and hit Edit Bones. Now we need to add the basic bounce motion for the body. Set a keyframe on frame 3 and move the figure down. Then I decided to loop it using the loop function, but honestly it behaved oddly, so I later replaced it with simple copying. Also, after selecting both keyframes, let's apply quadratic easing. Let's turn off the arms so they don't distract us. Now we need to position the legs according to the reference image we chose. You can use any reference you like. I adjust the leg positions at the knees and move them forward or back relative to the body. You should also pay attention to where the foot touches the ground. Don't forget to rotate the foot as well. I'll speed up this part since it's more routine work. It looks a bit jerky for now, but I'll fix that on the body later. For now, let's select all the keyframes and apply quadratic easing. This is where I finally realized the issue and fixed the bounce by copying keyframes. What's next? Now we need to do the same for the arms. I use our reference image, adjust the elbows and the positions relative to the body. Nice, it's already looking like a run. Let's move on to the head. First, we create an up and down animation, just like we did with the body. After that, we shift everything forward by one frame. Then we apply quadratic easing again. Let's watch the preview. We can tweak the position a bit for more effect. It looks funnier this way. You can also add rotation if you'd like. OK, next we need to make the head turn. To do that, select face and change the position on frame 4. Since we have a mask applied, the image will be clipped correctly. On frame 8, duplicate frame 1. Now do the same with the shorts. Shift the position forward on frame 4. And that's the run animation we ended up with. How can we use it? In the timeline, trim the animation to 8 frames. Click on the layer and choose Create Symbol. Then create a new scene. And from the library panel, add this symbol to the timeline. Now you can stretch the character. The animation will loop. You can also move it around to create spatial effects. All right, that's it for today, guys. Let me know if this was helpful or interesting. Did you learn something new from this tutorial? If you'd like to support my channel, you can always like or leave a comment. 
There's also the option to send a super thanks or become a paid subscriber. Details are in the description. Thanks for watching. See you in the next videos.